Just declare with me, joy, joy Joy to the world, all the boys and girls, Mm -hmm. joy to you and me, Mm -hmm. joy to the world, yeah, all the boys and our boys. Mm To the fishes in the... Why do fishes need joy? Joy to the people everywhere you see, right? Joy. Look at the person next to you. Just put your hand on their, on their head. Just, just put your hand right on their, on their hairdo and just say, Joy into this noggin. Come on. Joy. 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 Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Come on, come on. I like, I was talking with Sean about John Crowder. You know, he always just say, take your hand and just slide it, slide it through the greasy hair of the person sitting next. <laughs> just like, just say joy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Joy. Tonight's our, tonight's our, 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 our joy night. And, um. You know it's a joy night because we, we lit our joy candle, you know. So we, we lit our joy candle. And this is, this is an interesting time of the year because um, we, we, we sing songs like Joy to the World, right? And we, 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 and we, we talk about these, these themes and these, and these topics. And yet we do know that, that this is a time of the year when a lot of people actually, they actually struggle and wrestle with, uh, with joy, yeah? And... Um, Thank God for Jesus. I mean, I understand that Jesus is God, right? But, but thank the Lord for Jesus. Thank, you know, isn't it, we could, have been, we could have been like a part of that time, part, part of that time in human history when we were still waiting. You know, generation after generation, they're waiting and, and they just get more and more prophetic words, right? Like, like, like there was a period of time there for hundreds of years. Like if you went to a prophetic conference, every prophetic word was always the same. And it wasn't, Trump is coming back. No, no, no. Before, <laughs> before prophetic conferences were all about Trump, there was once a period in time when every prophetic conference was always the same thing. And it was always like, he's coming. Behold, he is coming. Right? Behold, he is coming. You know, and, um, and aren't you grateful? Aren't you joyful tonight that he came? That God became flesh and he dwelt you know, among it. I think there's actually a, a, like a battle during this time of the year to kind of distract us from, from that which really matters. That which really, really matters. What, what matters? What matters is this reality that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, okay, but would have life and not just life, right, but, in, but like in excess, of, 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 of life. You know, how many know that, that God doesn't just want to meet your needs? It's like when you read, when you read the Bible, it, it, it's like, it's like, you know, remember the fishes and loaves story? You know, it's like whenever God shows up, whenever, whenever the, mir- the miraculous takes place, he doesn't just meet people's needs. He always overdoes. Remember like the very first miracle of Jesus? Um, he turns, he turns water into wine. The very first miracle you know, he turns water into wine. And, um, and he, didn't, he didn't just meet their needs. He, he exceeded. It's, he loves, he, our God. Let me tell you something about your dad, okay? Your father, okay? Um, 
when it comes to blessing, he loves to outdo himself. He loves to just, he loves to just, he loves to overdo it. That's our God. That's our God. You know, I, I, you know all things in moderation. Unless you're God. It's almost like he doesn't believe in, in, in moderation. It's almost like, please, sir, may I have some more? And he's like, <laughs> what? What? You're asking me for what? You want more? All right, bro, bring your cup over here. And it's like he's about to turn the waterfall on, right? He's like, I'm not only going to fill your cup, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create an ocean. <laughs> like, our God is so crazy. Our God is so crazy, amazing, and he loves us, which is awesome. And he loves you, which is awesome. So in his heart for you tonight, I'll tell you what's in his heart. He has more joy available for you tonight. In fact, it's more than you need. Why? Because he doesn't just want to pour out. Into, he wants to so overflow out of you that everybody around you gets impacted by the joy of the Lord that's, in, that's inside of you. It's like, it, it, yeah, come on. Amen. Yes. It's funny because there is a bit of a joy drought, okay, within, within the culture. And, 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 and I got proof. I got evidence. In fact, every commercial on television is a commercial designed to appeal to your joy. Like every single commercial on television exists to remind you that you are not happy. You are miserable, right? Like every, every commercial, like, like, you know, even Folgers, they tell you, you know, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup, right? So this is what we know, that, that, that if you don't have coffee in the morning, then you're not going to have joy, right? And if you don't have Cialis, you're not going to have a job. Like, what's that? It's, it's the couple that sits in the bathtub on, on the beach, right? Like, because there's, of course, there's always bathtubs on the beach. Anyways, it's like, that doesn't even make, that doesn't even, like, you know. <laughs> the commercials always start off black and white. Everybody's bummed the heck out. Everybody's just like, but that's okay. Why? Because we got two blue pills, right? Take the two blue pills. You know, it, and, 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 you know, it may cause diarrhea, bloating, possible death, you know, and if the erection lasts longer than 14 hours, <laughs> call a doctor, right? Like, listen, I ain't calling a doctor. I, that's not even, I don't even, okay. That's not even, okay. Okay. Thank the Lord for Jesus, right? Like, hey, you know, we don't need two blue pills. We'll just say, God, I need you tonight. <laughs> Good times. You know, I was looking at, there's, there's some sci scientific studies that are, I was talking about the science. Everybody, follow the science, right? Especially if you live in the Northwest. If you live in Seattle, everybody's, follow the science. We're really big into, into the science, okay? Except for it's always, it's always changing, and it's just so relative, and it's just, but there's a, a new study that came out about, like, this is scientifically proven ways that you can enhance your, um, your joy. And so um, if you don't have Jesus, then you have, you have to Google things like this. So the first thing is, here it says, this is, this is in the article, this is for real. Need a boost of joy? Are you ready for this? This is the first thing. And this is how they start off, the, this is no joke. Need a boost of joy? Yeah. Go to a museum. A study that collected data and activities of mood and health, 50,000 adults in Norway, I didn't even know there were 50,000 adults in Norway. It says, they found that people who participated in more cultural activities reported higher levels of happiness and lower levels of anxiety and depression. So go to a museum. Here, here's the second thing. Uh, uh, um, chatting up your barista or cashier. That's good for your health. Make small talk with the stranger. Okay, that's great if you live in Texas. If you live in Seattle, that'll get you shot, okay? <laughs> like, seriously, have you ever tried making small talk with a stranger in Seattle? <laughs> yeah. 
I remember when our family, when we were, we were in Australia, in Australia, people are actually nice. And yeah, and I remember, I was just, like so many times, I'd just be like, like at, the, at, at, at the mall sitting on, on a bench or whatever, and a stranger would just be like, good eye, mate. And I'd be like, you talking to me? You talking to me, fool? <laughs> right? Like, I didn't actually say it. But, but, you know, anyways. So, anyways, make, make small talk. Make, make small talk with a stranger. Okay. All right, number three. While positive small talk is great, more substantial conversations could make our happiness even greater. So this is what they're recommending. Go deeper in your conversation, right? Have meaningful conversations as well. And then it gives you the, 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 the study on meaningful conversations and how it leads to greater joy. I like this one. This is funny. It says... Um, this one seems to apply to the USA only. So this isn't true um, anywhere. This is only true in the US, okay? Um, it's quite interesting. Live in the suburbs and get involved. And so this is what it says. If you need joy, move out of the city. <laughs> so just, it's as simple as getting out of Seattle, moving to Newcastle, and automatically, statistically, you're going to be happier. And it, isn't that funny? It's only in America. All right, good science. All right, number five. This one's funny. It says, listen to sad songs. This is why people need Jesus. If you're depressed at Christmas time, okay, listen to sad songs. How could so sad songs make us happy? And why do we seek them out? This question, researchers, scientists, people that got paid to actually do this kind of stuff, surveyed 722 people around the world to, discuss, to study what happens to their brains when they listen to depressing music. I think maybe sometimes it's because you listen to depressing music and you realize, man, the person that wrote this, their life really, really sucks. And at least my life isn't that bad. I feel a little bit, I feel a little bit better. So there you go. There's a good one. Uh, the num number six, spend money on experiences, not items, right? So don't buy donuts. Go to a donut making class. Here's another one. Eat more, <laughs> you know, Groupon. That's where you find that kind of stuff, okay? Donut making classes. Anyways, good times. Uh, here's another one. I don't know why I'm looking at it like this, as if I need reading glasses or something. I'm like, <laughs> it's like my De Niro face. It says, um, <laughs> eat more fruits and vegetables. We all know that being healthier makes us happy. Here's the thing about this, and it goes into this whole thing about eating more fruits and vegetables. Hey, that, that's, that's all great, but um, whenever I see people that are really, really happy, it's usually because they're just about to eat red meat or they just got done eating red meat. And now, I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But some of the saddest people I've ever met are actually vegans, okay? Now, I'm not, now I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers or anything. I, I get it. All, I, all living things are created by God, and we should respect all, 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 all living things. Except for we do forget the, 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 the crazy trippy vision that God uh, gave to Peter, right? When all these animals and halibut and crab came out of the skies, and God said, kill and eat. Like, that's, my, that's one of my favorite scriptures, when God says, kill and eat. All right. And, and I don't mind if somebody else wants to kill and fillet and get it all ready and then I'll eat. But um, anyways, again, people that need Jesus also need some good red meat. That is all good. All right. Everyone say joy. All right. First of all, what is joy? Joy is, we got this Greek word for it, uh, chera. Everyone say chera. Okay. Yep. And it actually means uh, prosperity of soul. So uh, prosperity of your mind, your will, and your emotions, okay? Um, it's also one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So here's how this works. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And you are supernaturally connected to the vine, the, va the vine that is Christ. See, in every other religion, when you um, surrender to that religious kind of system, that philosophy or whatever else, you go into massive striving mode because you got to kind of prove yourself. You got to prove to the tribe that you got what it takes, that you're one of them. You know, you got to go into proving and performance, okay? Now, what makes Christianity radically different than any other religion is that, for example, Buddha, before he, before he died, he said, strive without ceasing, okay? But Jesus, before he died, said, it is finished, 
okay? And, and every other cult and world religion, you have to perform, you have to tap dance in order to get people to like you, to get the cult leader to like you. But we know that what, what Jesus is looking for isn't a good performance. But what he's looking for are worshipers who worship in spirit and in truth. And so we see that one of God's favorite people in the Bible was King David. And King David was always, yep, brutally honest. In fact, uh, in the Psalms, David says things that aren't even actually true. He says things that aren't actually even theologically true. You, you can find theological things that just don't necessarily add up with the character and nature of God. And yet, okay, where it's not necessarily true, what you see is raw, brutal, honesty. And I believe that this is a massive key within, within the kingdom. You see, there's great cognitive dissonance when you try to trick yourself into believing something that isn't real. When you try to, and how many, how many times have, maybe you've been through this, or maybe you know somebody through it, you go, and you're like, how you doing? And they're just like, I'm great! You know, they look like you just had Botox, but they're just actually just trying to fake joy, right? Ah, oh, I got it! I got it! I got it! Okay? Yeah. The Christian doesn't have to fake anything. Why? Because the Christian knows that they're connected to the vine, and in time, joy is inevitable. The Christian knows you don't have to fake anything because in the kingdom, time is working for you and not against you. Why? Because every branch that's connected to the, to the vine will grow good fruit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Which is why sometimes, okay, sometimes you need a good old demon, okay, kicked out of you, right? I said, yeah, that's right, I said it. We, we believe in that. We see it every single week. Why? Because depression is a demon. It's not of the Holy Spirit, okay? You can't medicate a demon. <laughs> you can try, okay? But it's just going to take more and more and more. What do you do with a demon? You cast it out. You say, depression, <laughs> you aren't for me. You're not my friend. No more tea and scones. I'm not renting out that room to you anymore, okay? Yep, you're there. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not depressed. I'm saying um, you aren't me. You're not a part of my identity, okay? Um, uh, I'm not a depressed person. I'm wrestling with the spirit of depression. Two major things. Okay, and what you can do is you can say, hey, listen, in a certain area of my soul, I don't necessarily have prosperity at this moment, but I'm connected to the vine. And this is also what I know. Um, I, right now, regardless of how I feel, am in the presence of God. Declare it with me. I, right now, regardless of how I feel, am in the presence of God. Next time somebody comes up to you and their hair is just out like this and their eyes are bugging out, they look like they drank way too many espressos and they're just like, we got to blow the shofar. Did you bring your shofar? We got to do it. Ah! Do you feel that? Do you feel that? That's Jezebel. Jezebel. You can declare, you might be in the presence of Jezebel. <laughs> that, might, that might be where you are. But I, by faith, right now, am in the presence of God. <laughs> yeah. 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 Look, I it's twisting, it's twisting. That's what he does. That's what he does. He twists everything. It's a lie, That's a lie. Okay, you, you can talk about snakes and dragons. You can, you can look up to that. Whatever you look up to is actually what you worship. So I'm not underneath that stuff. Declare me right now. I, by faith, am in the presence of God. <laughs> Why is that a big deal? Because the presence of God is where the joy of the Lord is. Every time, every time, every time you read about the presence of God in the scripture, even with the, old, with the Ark of the Covenant, right? The box with the Ten Commandments and, and all of that. Every, every time they would bring out the Ark of the Covenant, there'd be all this singing and dancing. All Guess what there was with the Ark? Joy. Joy. And the presence of the Lord, there is joy. Everyone just according to me right now. Joy is a really big deal. 
In fact, there's no excuse for a joyless Christian. Now, there are times, okay? There are times when you're, you're not like, everything is possible. Yeah, there are times when life's not a Lego movie, okay? And it's really, really important that you recognize that your soul has a dashboard, okay? And just like your car has a dashboard, it has indicator lights. And when you go through seasons of joylessness, it's really important that you keep a pulse on that. Why? Because joylessness is an indicator they need to check your engine. See, sometimes we think that joylessness is an indicator that we are in the presence of evil or an evil person. Okay, but evil shouldn't really be able to affect our joy. In the same way that evil shouldn't really be able to affect our peace. You talk to missionaries that are called of God to be in like creepy, creepy places, and it's almost like they don't even sense or discern any of it. Why? There's just a grace on them, so they're just so full of joy, they're so full of peace, they're so full of the, the partnering with the angelic, and you're like, don't you feel that? Like, no, 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 why? Because my, my, my indicator light isn't on, my, my joy is complete, it is full. I, I by faith, right now, am in uh, the presence of the Lord. And the presence of the Lord is where uh, where the joy of the Lord is at. First Chronicles chapter 16, I'll read it to you. First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 26 and 27 uh, says, the gods of other nations, okay, are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. That's what we talked about this morning. Gods of other nations, okay, all the other religions, all these other things, you know, people offering their, their spices, their rice, all this other stuff. Okay, those are just idols. But our God is the creator of the heavens, of the cosmos. We talk, man, I love this morning. Whoever preached, that dude, yeah, come on. The cosmos means divine order, okay? The opposite of cosmos is chaos. The, the heavens declare of the, of the supernatural, divine, amazing intelligence of our creator who's also our father. All the other gods of the world, okay? All the other gods, they're just idols. Our God, our Father, is the creator of the cosmos. Honor and majesty surround him. Check it out. Strength, everyone declare strength. And joy fill his dwelling. How do you know you're in the dwelling place of the most high God? There is an abundance of strength and joy. Yep, 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 yep the shepherds, okay, Merry Christmas, okay, this is supposed to be a Christmas night, okay, so the shepherds, they were out in the field, minding their own business, okay, just doing their thing, okay, I don't know how spiritual these, 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 these guys were, okay, I, I don't know if they're out there reading the Torah, you know, they could have been out there with cigars for all I know, we don't know, they don't necessarily seem to be people of great significance culturally. And here is God, and he checks in with this group of somewhat cultural insignificant people, okay? God checks in, and he shows up with all these angels, okay? Angels. Angels, angels, and more. This is like, this is a really big deal in heaven, right? So when my, Michael and Gabriel are like, all right, the angel's like, how many are you sending? Uh, I don't know, just keep going, just keep going. You want us too? Yeah, just you guys too, you know. Even, even the freaky ones with all the eyes on the wing, yeah, you can send them too. Like, just, just go. All of us? Yeah, just keep going. I don't think that realm can contain it. It's okay, just keep going. Just keep going. We're gonna really bum out these shepherds. It's gonna be great. All right, so here are these shepherds. Minding their own business. All of a sudden, the glory of God descends down on, the, on this field. And, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the angels declare, hey, don't be afraid. Why? Because we bring you good news of great. Yes. Can you imagine hearing that from, 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 the, from the multitudes of angels? Fear not, Seattle. Why? Because I bring you great joy to who? What does your Bible say? I bring you great joy to all people. You know that the joy of the Lord that brings strength, that it's the intent of Father, that that joy would be made known to all people. To all people. Just to clarify right now, all people. Yeah. The Savior. Yes. The Messiah, who is the Lord, 
has been born. When? Today. Ooh-wee. Where is he born? In Bethlehem. In Bethlehem? What? In the city of David. Okay. We also know Matthew 2.10 says that there are these, these magi, okay? These mystics. And um, again, these, these, basically these, these pagans, okay? These astrologers. And they're, they're, what are they doing? They're watching the stars. They're reading the stars. Again, we talked about this one. The stars are created to be what? Signs, okay? Now, we don't go to the, the stars to get, you know, a, a, that's called a horoscope, okay? You, you don't need to do that. Why? Because you have Jesus, okay? You have the Holy Spirit, okay? And the Holy Spirit makes just a lot more sense than, than horoscopes. So for some of you, this is going to be really shocking, okay? But if you're a Christian, you probably shouldn't be reading your uh, horoscopes, okay? Yeah. Yep, my name is Pastor Darren. I love you. And uh, trust me, like, that, that's just one more door you don't want to open. It's the door to the occult. And so anyways, I'm glad we had this conversation. Sometimes I feel like we got to have these, these talks, okay? Now, um, there is a gal, maybe you've heard of her. Her name is Patricia King. And she didn't always used to be a, a Christian. In fact, she used to be really big into the, uh, into the New Age. And she loved horoscopes. She loved the stars. And guess what? Patricia went into a deep dive on the stars. And she started reading about the, the, the virgin constellation. And she started reading about all, all of these different constellations and how they actually reaffirm okay, the Bible. And did you know that from studying the stars and through astrology, actually Patricia came to know Jesus that way? Maybe you didn't know that. Here's these magi. And they're all just like, you know, and they got, they got their incense burning, okay? And they got, they got their music, dang, they got their sitar, dang, 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 you know, playing. And, and, and all of a sudden it says, Matthew 2.10, I love it. It says, when the magi saw the star, they were filled. This is really interesting. It doesn't say, when the magi saw the, the star, they got happy. They, they rejoice. You know what it says? It says, when the Magi saw the star, they were filled with joy. Isn't that amazing? You know what we need? We don't just need happiness. We don't just need the kind of joy that comes from listening to Garth Brooks. Okay? We need to be filled with joy. The, 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 the joy that we need is the kind of joy that you get filled with, all right? Okay, Jesus says in John 15, verse 11, these things I have spoken to you, why? So that my joy may remain in you and that your may be full. Joy is a real big deal. Joy is a real big deal. And when our what our joyless light on our engine light shows up, um, when there's no joy, you're out of fuel. You're out of, you're out of gas. And how do you know that when your car runs out of gas, you, you, you break down, okay? And, um, and you can still stay in your car on the side of the road and pretend like you're driving. People are going to look at you and say, man, why aren't they going anywhere? It's because you ran out of fuel. Okay, you ran out of fuel. And I wonder sometimes in, 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 in the church, I wonder sometimes we've got a lot of Christians that are broken down, not really going anywhere, but every Sunday they show up. But there's not really necessarily a whole lot happening within their lives. Right? There's not necessarily a whole lot of, 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 of kingdom activity. Why? They ran out of fuel. They ran out of, they ran out of joy. They ran out of, out, of this, out of this place. And we also know that this is a big deal. Why? Because really, the kingdom of God, okay, Romans 14, 17, is not a matter of eating and drinking, but it's the kingdom is, you know, what is the kingdom? It's the place of God's ruling authority, okay? It's, it's the jurisdiction of his, of his government, okay? And what is it? It's the realm of his righteousness, his peace, and his joy. Joy. Yeah. I want to, I want to, I want to use my life. I want to use my influence, my authority. Not, not just going around triggering people to get really, really mad. 
Okay? You know, oh, we're going to stir up the body. We're going to get everybody mad. No, I want to use my, my authority, my life, okay, to instigate joy in the hearts of believers, to stir it up, to, 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 to use this stick of communication and impartation, to, to stick it into people's embers where they think the fire is out, and to stir it up, to stir up, to, to stir up the joy um, within, within, the, within the church. I want to be a catalyst of joy. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I just think that, that, that joy for, for the believer is not a luxury. It's a necessity. We have to have it. It's like air. It's like good music. It's like red meat. You just have to have it. You just have to have it. We are going to take communion here in just a second. And guess what? There's, there's great joy in communion. Why? It's a reminder of our union. It's participating with his body and his blood. This is, this is somewhat symbolic, but what we do is when we engage with communion, we engage by faith. What does that mean? It means that it's not just a symbolic act, okay? We go past symbolism and engage with, with um, mystical impartation, receiving what is no longer bread, but it is the body of Christ and bringing it into us, knowing that his body comes into us and it releases the dynamics of the kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy, okay? That the joy of Christ Jesus is being released into your body on a cellular level, that the joy of Christ Jesus is being released in a molecular, in a physical, in a supernatural level. We engage with his blood that is the light of heaven. It is the joy of the Lord. So we don't just engage with these elements in a place of mere tradition, okay? But we engage with these elements knowing that these elements are a activation given to us by Jesus himself. And he said, do it often, right? Why? Because it will interrupt the frequency of this world, which is a frequency of grief and sorrow. It is a place where we never have enough to rejoice. It is a place where the enemy always keeps us comparing our lives to others. It is this place where it's like enough is never enough. If I just had that, if I just knew them, if I just had that many followers, if I just, if I just, if I just, if I just. And what we do as Christians is we, we, we say no to the comparison game and we say yes to Christ. And we say, Jesus, you, you are stinking enough. You are enough for me. What if, you're, what if you're struggling tonight? And this is what I know. They say that uh, 10% of Americans struggle throughout the year with depression, with anxiety, with sadness. And uh, to a great degree, probably every person in this room has at one point in your life struggled with, uh, with sadness, with sadness of heart. And if you're here tonight, um, and you're struggling with sadness of heart. You're struggling with this thing. And maybe it's been a season, or maybe it's actually like turned into a great significant portion of your life. I don't want to mock you or, or belittle you or say that there's something flawed about you or, um, or anything like that. But this is, this is really important. Don't worship your depression. It's there, okay? It's, it, it, it's there, okay? But it's not... It's not who you are. This is something that you're experiencing. This is something that you're feeling. But, but don't assimilate it into the core of who you are. Don't, don't let it be the kind of thing that when you, when you think of yourself or you see yourself in the mirror, the first thing that comes up is this thought, uh, I am depressed. This is who I, this is who I am. For in doing that, we, we're, we're actually... Anytime we assimilate something into our identity, um, we are ascribing that even unto the Lord. For in him we live and we move and we have our being. And we, we ascribe our identity to Christ. We are saved because of Christ. His righteousness is our righteousness. His holiness is our, is our holiness. And so when we ascribe something that is unholy to our identity, we are actually also likewise ascribing that to onto, projecting that onto Christ Jesus. And so for that reason, we say, I will not worship any emotion that is not in alignment 
alignment with Christ Jesus, if it's not in alignment with righteousness, peace, and joy, I might be experiencing that emotion in this season. It might be here today, it is not here to stay. And if you're wrestling with sadness of heart, you, you can just declare, it might be here today, but it is not here to stay. In fact, let's all just declare this right now. Depression, sadness of heart, grief. You were natural for a moment. You were normal for a season. You might be here today. You are not here to stay. There's no room in the inn. You don't get to move in. We're not friends. Second thing is, if you're experiencing pattern, uh, if you're experiencing sadness of heart, recognize you're not alone. But I feel alone, I know, but you're not alone. But I haven't been able to find a good church, I know, but you're, you're not actually in isolation. Ah, but I am so isolated. I don't even know any Christians. But, yeah, but you're, you're, you're not alone. You're not, but, but I feel, I, I know, but I'm not in. No, I, I understand. You're, 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 you're forsaking a spiritual reality that the unseen realm is just as real as the seen realm. And if you are in Christ, you are a part of a family that consists of a father, a son, and a spirit. And that relationship is not contingent on your obedience or by your performance. It has been made possible because of the cross. And that means that when you feel alone, you can declare this loneliness is a lie. Even though I might be physically alone in this time and in this space and even in this place, I declare I've been woven into the family of God and there is no separation. There's the Son, the Spirit, the Father, and myself. It is this place that Isaiah said, as we entangle our spirits in the Spirit of God and the Father, as we kavah, which means to entangle, as we meditate on this incredible, beautiful, mystical, union he will renew our joy he will renew our strength we'll mount up on wings of eagles and for this reason when we're in this season and and the joyless indicator light comes on and maybe you've had this in the past or maybe maybe you'll even have a moment this next year where the enemy will will come after will come after your joy you know what you should do wage war against the joylessness wage a holy war against the joylessness. You say, I might bleed, I might die, but I will not live a joyless existence. Pattern interrupt everything with Holy Spirit. Invite Holy Spirit, you're a three-part temple, meaning that you have a, you have a physicality to your dynamic. And so when joylessness comes at you, look at what, what are you doing physically? If you're being highly, highly active, running 20 miles a day and just kind of going after it and your adrenal glands are shot and you know, maybe practice the rhythm of rest. Maybe chill out a little bit. Okay, that's not exactly my problem, okay? But if you have no physical activity, if every day just consists of countless hours in front of a screen, take that into consideration and say, this screen time is coming to steal my joy. And I'm going to arrange for a rhythm of activity, which will be an act of worship. Uh, we had one of the coaches of the Seahawks that attended our church and, and he said, when I lift weights, that is my worship and I would never wanna cheat God in my worship. And so every time he lifts the plates, it is, it is like, it is as if it's gonna be the final act of worship and he gives it 150%. And so if there's no activity in your activity, interrupt it and say, I'm gonna worship the Lord with my body and I'm gonna fine tune my physicality. In the same way, interrupt the areas of your spirituality. If you're, if you're a highly spiritual person, you're up at 4 a.m. and you're soaking and you're meditating and you're, and you're in the word of God and you're praying and it's just, you know, and, 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 and you feel something coming after your joy, switch it up. 
Switch it up. And instead of spending eight hours of quiet time by yourself, okay, go and get a job. Go and make coffee for people. Engage with human beings. And you'll find that being around evil people is actually a wonderful delight. Jesus loved it. Jesus loved being around sinners. And sometimes, sometimes spiritual people are, believe it or not, way too spiritual for their own good. They're at home all day long, just doing nothing but engaging with the screen. It's not healthy. You need to be around messed up humans. You need to be around jacked up people. You know, if it's been six weeks since you've heard the F-bomb, man, you gotta leave the house. If you're hearing that word in your house, right, then we need to address that and get, get your spouse saved, amen? Switch it up. Physicality, spirituality. How about just in the areas of your soul? If you're, if you're, if you're always grumbling and complaining, right? It, you just, that's your default. Your, your default isn't rejoicing. Do the old rubber band trick, right? Put the old rubber band around your wrist. And when you grumble and you complain, snap it. When you gossip about somebody, snap it. Tell all your friends and your family, hey, see this rubber band. If you see me saying something that's not in the same frequency as rejoicing, snap the band. Why? Because I want to be accountable for areas where I've allowed my soul to go in 2021, but I don't want it to go there in 2022. Why? There's too much at stake. I got to protect, I got to protect my fuel tank. I got to protect my joy. Life is way too short to live a joyless existence. And the third thing is this, all this is all great. All this is all great. Protect your joy, interrupt stuff. But the third thing is this, when you wake up tomorrow morning, declare from your heart, Jesus, you are my joy. And Satan, you cannot touch this. People cannot touch this. Circumstances cannot affect this. Jesus, you are my joy. You don't have to feel it. You do have to believe it. It's faith. Faith first, then the feelings. Jesus, you are my joy. You are in me. I got so much joy, it's freaky. I got fuel coming out of my ears. I don't feel it. I feel tired. I feel weak, I feel like giving up, I feel a little bit bummed out, but Jesus, you are my joy. You, you Jesus, yes you, 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 you are my, you said you'd never leave me nor forsake me. I know this feeling is a lie. You are my joy and I got you baby and you got me I am full I am fat with joy I am fat I am full I am loaded if joy was wine I am I am drunk all the time I I am buzzing right now because of your great fatness your fatty fatty joy you love me I love you I love you Yes, I love you. I love you. You love me. Ah, I'm feeling better. Yes, you, 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 you. Ah, that's how I pray. I don't know. You're the weirdos. Jump up to your feet. Jump up to your feet. Jump up to your feet. Declare me right now. Jesus. Now, come on. Jesus. You. You, 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 you are my, mine, 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 mine. This joy is mine. It's mine. It's mine. This fatness, this wine, this blood, this body. It was, this blood was shed for me. Me, this body was broken for me. Mine, my wine 
It's my wine. It's my blood. It's my body. It's my Savior. It's my shepherd. For the Lord is my shepherd. He's mine. He's my shepherd. My lover. He's my bridegroom. His love is better than wine. He is mine. He is my beloved. He is my beloved and I am his. He brought me to his banqueting table and his banner over me is jealous love. He's coming for me. He's coming for me because he loves me. I am irresistible to him. He's crazy about me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. It says that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken and given for you. Eat in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together tonight. My body. Your body given to me. Your body broken for me. Your body broken for me. Your body broken your body broken for me, for me, for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup is my blood. Take it drink it. Do this often. For as often as you do, you are making a prophetic declaration of a glorious new covenant that is made possible. It's a covenant of connection and intimacy, which is made possible not off of your performance or off of your surrender. It has been made possible because of my love for you. Take this cup, take this blood, and drink it and celebrate. Celebrate not with, with grieving, but celebrate with great joy, with great rejoicing in knowing that my grace is sufficient. Let's partake of the blood tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Josh, you want to sing something? I love it, man. Let's go. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life, with my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. If my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made I will see of the goodness of God I'm gonna see of the goodness 
grace of God. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Okay, let's do this. Everybody close your eyes. Just take a deep breath, just relax. You don't, you don't have to do anything, okay? Just open your heart. I just want you to see yourself like, like, a, like a branch. And I want you to see where you're grafted into. You're grafted into the vine. Are you there? See it? You're such a pretty branch. Yes, you are. All right, now this is what we're gonna do. I want you to pull everything that you need tonight out of Christ. You're going to be like a, a mosquito that just got your big sucker straw nose thing right into a vein. And by faith, you're going to pull everything you need right from the vein of Christ. You can begin. You don't need it from me, pull of his love. If you need love tonight, yeah, right there, pull, pull, pull by faith. That's what we call drinking. Take a big drink, you pull right now, pull right now. Love, joy, yep, joy, 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 yep, 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 yep. Peace. Pull it into your heart. Patience, anywhere there's anxiety, anywhere where there's fretting, anywhere, anywhere where you're freaking out about tomorrow, just pull from his peace right now, right from the vine, right from the vine, right from Christ. Patience. Kindness. Just begin to pull right now from the Father's kindness. Just take a big drink right now, Father's kindness. Pull it into you. Just receive, receive, receive. Goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, self control. All right, you got it? Is that, it tastes good, right? All right, now, Father, double it right now. They could have double right now. A double for their trouble right now. Like double it. Double. Double portion right now. Double portion right now. Double portion. More. More right now. More right now. More right now. Anxiety go right now. All anxiety go. All fretting go right now. All spirit of grief let go right now. You a spirit. You don't get to stay. Out right now. Out right now. Yep, 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 yep. And now I just declare joy unspeakable and full of glory right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In fact, in fact, so many here, and you're going to find that, um, that uh, this, the thoughts of suicide aren't going to come anymore. You're, going to, you're just going to be like, oh, wow, I, I didn't think about killing myself today. No, and, I, and I'm not being flippant. I, I'm telling you the truth. There's somebody here, you just got radically set free from a spirit of suicide. Thank you, Lord. 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 All right, just pray with me real quick. Just say, Father, fuel me up with the fuel I need to do what you have called me to do and to be who you've called me to be. And I'll take a little extra for my friends. In Jesus' name, everybody said... Amen. Hey, God bless you. Love you guys. Hey, if you need prayer for anything tonight, come on up and pray. We've got a prayer ministry team, and they are full of joy fuel, and they will lay hands on you and just get y'all all pumped up, okay? Love you guys. Bless you.
Uh, real, 